Hi, what's up? My name's Clayton. I'm a lead machinist here at Slacker. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of skimming. You might have also heard of decking or surfacing. We're going to, we're going to skim ahead today. Come check it out. So we've got our skimming machine here. We're going to be doing a head today, a five chain head. Typically on our heads, we're only skimming about two to three thousandths of an inch off of it. This one's in a lot worse condition. It's got a lot of corrosion on the head probably going to end up to the 10 to 15 thou taken off of it which is pretty extreme in our cases the main reason we want the the head surface to be decked and we do the same thing to the deck surface of the case halves is to make sure that the seal between those two with the gasket is perfect a lot of gaskets have an ra call out which is going to be what kind of variation in that surface is acceptable to adequately crush the gasket and keep everything sealed up so come check out we're going to start with the setup and then we'll get into making some chips. All right, the first thing we wanna do is get it set up on these heads. They have dowels on the bottom. It's a pain to take them out. It's way easier to leave them in. The only thing that causes problems with is when we surface it, we've gotta put them up on these one, two, three blocks to get them off of the dowels. But once we get it clamped down, we are going to send an indicator across it, see what kind of deviations we have, try to get it as level as possible, and then we'll start making chips. Then we use a digital drop indicator to, to see how level we are. We'll set it up as zeroed on a corner, and then we'll go see what the other four corners look like and kind of keep an eye on what the deviation in between is. So when we're leveling it, we're just focusing on the, the corners, but the deviation in between is kind of going to give me some insight as to how much I'm going to need to take off. I like to mark a zero so I can come back to the same point every time I adjust and re-zero my indicator. It's important that your indicator is perpendicular to the surface. If, it, if you're at an angle, your reading won't be very accurate without doing a little bit of trig to figure out the actual number. So we'll zero that, and then we'll start seeing what we're working with. So right now we're about a half thou under the zero point. So it's actually looking fairly flat where we're measuring. We're ending just under one thou under the zero. And then we'll go to the other corner. That one's just over three thou in that corner under. And that was two. So now we know we've got a zero and all three of our other corners are below that point. So we'll use shims to bring it back up. Because I recorded, written it down, it'll be really easy to remember what kind of adjustments I need to make. I've got a handful of steel shims over here to get it all to that, that same zero point on four corners. So these are just some stainless steel shim material. This one in particular is a thou, and I've got one, two, three, and five thou shim. It allows us to really dial in the level of it. The reason we want it to level is to make sure that we're taking the least amount of material off of the deck. The thickness of it is really kind of the life for how many times we can rework the head before we're gonna have to get a new head or do something special like double gaskets or figuring out how to make sure that our piston to valve clearance is not gonna be a problem. Yeah, so now we're gonna check and see what putting the shims in there has done. And so we can see by putting a 3 thou shim here that our zero point is now a thou under. So it did swing that down a little bit. That's the main reason we wanna check and make sure that after we made all those adjustments, we did get the results we were looking for. So we'll re-zero that, send it around and see what we've got. So on this head in particular, the really bad corrosion spots are in between these water jacket ports. Those seem to be the low spots. And that quarter is now about a half thou over zero. That one's about the same. Overall, minus the, the corrosive spots, I'm only seeing about a thou to two thou of deviation in the head. Some of it low, some of it high. So besides the corrosion, it does look pretty typical but that corrosion's gonna make us have to skim a lot more off than normal. And when we start cutting it, uh, you'll be able to see those spots that are way under that are affected by the corrosion. All right, last thing you wanna do after your setup is just give it a little wiggle, make sure nothing's loose. 
Everything's good. Now it'd be time to touch it off. I'm gonna go ahead and paint some dicom on here to just make the contrast a little easier for the camera. And uh, then we'll make some chips. It's like a day at the spa for this guy. I'm gonna let this dry, because if I don't, the air coming off of that cutter is just gonna blow it away, and then it's not gonna, it'll just be like wiping it off almost. Give it a second to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and start touching off the, the cutter, and then we'll get into this. Get a little bit closer. So touching off on the heads, usually we'll use a piece of paper right underneath the cutter. This machine has a one, one insert CDN cutter. So we'll just slide it around under there, slowly lowering the head until that paper starts to catch some drag on the cutter. And then we'll know it'll be about five thou away from the actual surface at that point. Then we'll set up the indicator so we know exactly how much we're moving. The dial on this for its height adjustment is fairly accurate. It is still just hash marks. This indicator gives us down to the 50 million, super excessive, but also a lot more insight. Turn the machine on, safety first. So now we'll finish touching off. We should be about five thou above the surface right now until I hear, see, or feel that it's starting to cut. So now we're touching and we'll make our first pass. The first pass, we're just gonna skim it from the touch off point to see what we're working with. And uh, just to make sure that we're not taking off more than we need to if we went a little, went down a little bit more than planned on that touch off. That would be around where the bore is, the contact on that on the original case. And you can also see this, this spot right here is almost always the high point on these heads. So now we're starting our second pass. This is gonna be about one and a half thou. This should clean up a majority of everything on there, but there is going to be some spots where the corrosion was in between those water ports that are they're going to be low and it'll be really easy to see it with the dicom on there so after that one and a half thou cut you can see a majority of the head has came in but we still have these points in between the water jacket that is going to cause problems it's going to bleed over if we were to try to put this on a block right now so we will keep going probably about one and a half thou at a time maybe two thou at a time So you can see after 3,000 taken off of it, we still have those spots that are closing in. So you can see we're, we're making progress. We'll leave it surely. We'll take another one and a half. When you're cutting aluminum, it's super important to have a little bit of lubrication in there. Aluminum likes to act almost like plastic when you're cutting it. If you don't have any lubricant, it's real stretchy and it'll dull or impregnate the cutter pretty easily. WD-40 works pretty good. My personal favorite is Febreze. Smells a little better. Yeah. My favorite part of this process is really just watching the deviations in the head slowly work themselves out until you get that nice, perfect mirror-like finish on it. It's kind of like watching the loading bar. You get anticipation and all of a sudden you're there and it looks awesome. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more dicom to it in just the areas that we're concerned about. All right. Someone get some dip. We're making some chips. Come and get it. Most of this right here, we can see there's no more red in it. So it's, it is cleaning up that surface. It is flat, but that color deviation in the finish is actually the penetration of that corrosion into the material. But in this spot right here, you can still see a little bit of red. So you know that it, it's still that raw surface that was there before we even started. Oh yeah. A little lubrication. We're at eight thou now. Just doing a between one and one and a half thou passes, just slowly but surely. It's really important that we don't take too much off more than we need to. I could just pick three or four thou passes at a time, but then I might end up taking three extra. And like I said, the normal we take off is two to three. So that would be a whole nother rebuild that we'd be taking away from these heads before you'd have to go through any special precautions to worry about the piston to valve clearance. And we're starting to clean up. We still have a little splotch of red right there. Put a tiny little drop of this in it. Uh, just for fun, make sure that we're erasing all of that good stuff. 
We're gonna stop real quick. I have already surfaced the other head. We're just gonna make sure that we're gonna wind up at a similar dimension. All right, so we still got a little bit to go. So this is probably the dirtiest head that I've had the pleasure to work on since I've been here. Like I said, typically two to three taken off. The highest I've done before this one was about five thou taken off of it. It had some damage from shipping. It came to us unassembled, but this one, the other head we took 15 off of it just to get all of that corrosion to go away. That's the most I've ever taken off of a head or case. Not great, but we're gonna make it great. All right, we just finished up. Ended up taking about 12 thou off of the head. From here, we'll get it blown out, cleaned up, and get it ready for Will or Irwin to put it together, and then onto the dyno. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to stay tuned for more awesome content.